Hello. Hey, Mom. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? I'm good. I missed your call yesterday night. Uh, we spoke yesterday. I didn't call it. I don't think I called yesterday night, but... No, it's all right. Um, so what are you doing? I am on my way to uh, go do some work stuff. I'm going to be on a panel thing. Wow. Max Lugavere does an incredible job here of showing us his mother's journey and his own journey as well. But I think that the true accomplishment here is that he keeps it really centered on her, her feelings, her experiences, her struggles, and truly as well, her moments of joy as she navigates having multiple health issues at the same time, as she struggles to hold her sense of self, both because she's losing her memory, but also her declining health. And anyone who's ever had a family member who has suffered from any form of dementia will certainly find plenty to relate to in this astounding documentary. We don't usually hear from the people that are going through this, so I think this is what makes this documentary so special. Um, you really see the toll that it takes on Max's mom um, and how she, this being trapped in her mind is causing her to spiral into depression and despair. Um, yeah, I think even seeing how steep of a decline she's going through in this documentary alone, she goes from um, simple short-term memory problems to not even remembering how to work a door or use a bathroom. Uh, so I thought that was, you know, really moving to see and, and really eye-opening, you know, just how fast this, these kinds of things can um, affect you. I loved the home footage in this film. It was used so well. Um, you know, you're, you are with Max's mom and feeling that nostalgia for her. And it's not just nostalgia, it's on a different level. Um, it's missing the way things were and the way you, you, you could be yourself, um, you know, free of these mental and physical challenges. Um, yeah, and I love seeing Max's life and how dedicated he is to his mother. Um, and, you know, dealing with the moral dilemma of do we fight and make her miserable or do we allow the diseases to take that course so that she can, you know, pass relatively peacefully. Um, so, yeah, it was really interesting to see from these perspectives. Wow, this was really touching. And I, I really liked the style of this documentary because I feel like it wasn't just about a degenerative brain disease uh, such as dementia or Alzheimer's. Uh, Parkinson's I feel like it wasn't the main focus in the beginning it wasn't like right in your face this is about this I felt like it was about family and dealing with something that comes up like that it was just really nice to kind of see that style as opposed to you know it just kind of focusing in on the one aspect of it I thought having the family and the heart um first in in like some of the old you know videos of the home videos and the family going to the park and sitting on that bench just it was really awesome to watch um sad obviously but i just really liked the style of this um, seeing a very honest perspective from the person going through it just feeling scared and not knowing what to do and not wanting this to be happening it was a very raw and realistic look at what really happens with people. It's about exposing nutritional companies on how food and exercise play a detrimental role in one's health. Max, who serves as the writer and director of this film, has a mom with Parkinson's disease who takes Parkinson and Alzheimer pills and suffers from dementia. Throughout the film, we see so many sides of her from being tired and scared, afraid she'll die young, and she can't even read. She's gone to a million doctors and taken a bazillion tests, but she still can't find any answers on how to cure her disease. 
Her son is juxtaposed to her because he is kind and loves her so much and hides his sadness to be cheery and supportive of her in her place. You see him shoot Sam's stomach or a close-up of his mom on the deck, and I feel that all the shots were intentionally placed there to serve a point. I like the one scene with the glucose animation as well. It helps lighten the tone up a bit and lets us retain in the information. It's also good for children. There was a big casting and a great use of location for this documentary. Things take a turn when we dive into the chain effect of dieting and lifestyles. There are a lot of visual animations and graphs for this part. We see how flawed nutritional scientists can be and how Max is trying to expose nutritional companies. I even found out that surgery can cause Alzheimer's because the brain isn't getting enough blood. When we see him say that she only smiles when she sees him is the saddest part of the film. I can't help but cry. I think he made this film to not only educate us, but to pay tribute on to his mom. This was a really powerful film. I loved the way that it opened with all of the old home movies and things like that and showing this family. Um, as the film went, I, the best way to describe it is you felt like you knew them. You felt like you were a part of this family. And there was so much that I didn't know about Alzheimer's and dementia. So listening to the interviews, listening to them talk about it was incredibly informative, but heartbreaking at the same time. So this film had all of the emotional highs and lows. One of the, um, gosh, one of the things that was so incredibly impressive was um, her candor when she's talking about what she's feeling, what she's going through. I mean, I don't think that I could be that eloquent in what I was experiencing, as eloquent as, as she was. I think they used some really cool graphics and animation to help describe kind of what happens with your brain. And I think that that was very, very smart. They, they did a wonderful, wonderful job with this. Their cinematography was amazing. It was on point. All of the sound was great. The way that they edited this kept it going and kept it at a really good pace. This was really powerful and it really hit home for me. Um, I think it was a really, it was a really good look at, you know, those suffering with, um, with Alzheimer's and dementia, but also the caretakers. Um, and I think a lot of the time it, it's hard to fully grasp the full extent of what these diseases can do to someone and how you can, can help or um, just the day to day of, of dealing with these. And I think this story does such a great job highlighting that and, and the guilt that you feel for not being there and not being able to do everything you can and watching someone slip away and, and dealing with all the emotions of that. I think this was a really emotional piece. I think it was a really, um, it was a really informative piece. I think it just, it, it really hit hard for me and it really encapsulated all of the, all of the different nuances of these two diseases. This is a raw look at dementia and Parkinson's disease. It's a way of going step by step on the life of those who care for people with those ailments. It's really just that's a raw look at at these ailments and it's a way to show how it impacts the people in their lives which I don't think we always think about we know that these are horrible illnesses that most people don't even want to think about happening to their families and when it does you're really thinking how can you help and Max is showing how he's helping even if it's little things each day but when the story really gets started with his mother and focusing on her is where it becomes really interesting because you're knowing something happens and the title Little Empty Boxes really becomes perfect for this because he's trying to fill in the boxes in her head. 